back to Helios Tap House, and this is episode two of season two of the Average Joe Beer Connoisseur, and we are still here providing your weekly entertainment of the quarantine. So last week, I said I had a special guest of Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I only had his beer. Well, that shit went viral, and you will not believe who my special guest is this week. So why don't you just come on in? Just come on in. It's Taylor. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the average Jane. She's here. Stone Cold did not see it, and he's not coming. <laughs> but that's all right. It doesn't matter. So weekly entertainment during the quarantine. You know, really not much has changed. I go to work. She gets to stay home, so that's cool. The only really big thing for us is that we've run out of, like, porns to try. And now, because of the little Dicky episode, um, we know what milking is, which is very strange. So if you don't know what milking is, I don't do not suggest going to Pornhub and checking it out. I just suggest watching the episode of Little Dicky where they talk about milking, which I think is episode three. I so. heard they were like shutting down Pornhub or something. That's a little long. No, no they're, they're done shooting new videos. And casting Couch is done. Pornhub's not going to shut down. Like, that, <laughs> that business is booming. So It's free yeah. in Italy. I, well, I'm pretty sure it's free everywhere. I mean, I think the <laughs> subscription to Pornhub might be free, but no one needs that to actually watch the videos, I don't think. I'm more of an XNXX.com person myself. It's not as popular, but hey, it's all free. So anyway, that's what I was saying. We ran a random thing, so that's cool. Um, she came on the show because we've been drinking earlier today during this quarantine, and she was like, oh, you're going to shoot a show today? I said, of course I am. And she said, I want to be on, and I cannot tell her no because I have to be with her for the next two months in-house. So she's here. Uh, but no, just kidding. We had a lot of fun in December, so we're going to do it again. So... Here, I got, first up, I'm just going to tell you, we're just going to get right into it. This is called Bout It, Bout It by Jay Wakefield. Last episode, I had a Jay Wakefield. I was super pumped to try one of their specialty beers because they've been so hyped up to me. And if you remember, I tried it first and then I came back to it at the end to see if anything changed. Well, this one I let warm up. This one I let to get to serving temperature. This one I am sure all the flavors will be here if they're going to be here, you know. So the last one was good. But if, for how hyped they are, I'm expecting to be a little better. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to get into it. You want to cheers to that? All right. So this is the bout about it. It's a 17%. 17%, right? That's what I'm thinking. Uh, American Double Stout. Uh, it's by Jay Wakefield, as we talked about last time there in Miami. They do great stuff. They have the Star Wars theme if you're down there. Check it out. But this is brewed with cocoa vanilla and maple i'm just double checking to make sure i wrote everything down cocoa vanilla and maple so that's supposed to be all the flavors that you're getting i think the vanilla that a lot of places that don't make like specialty uh sweet stouts do is they just add the vanilla to kind of add sweetness to it you know and they don't actually expect like the vanilla bean to pop out now some sweet stouts do have a vanilla bean to pop out uh, but this one here. So this is also a collab with Three Chiefs, and which is kind of strange is Three Chiefs is actually in Los Angeles. So this is Miami, and they're collabing with, you know, someone in Los Angeles. So that's Not to be cool. confused by Three Sons. <laughs> Not to be confused by Three Sons. I wore this shirt, and there's going to be a part of the show later where you might see the bag, but it says Big Sexy on it. So I bought this shirt specifically for the fact that it said Big Sexy on it. because The brewery one... was also good, too, so... Yeah, they made fantastic <laughs> beer. I mean, they did. The, the Peanut Butter King was great. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was running $40 a bomber, but we didn't really care because we were already drunk by the time we were there. We had a Bad idea. to catch two hours to sit, so we wanted to, you know... <laughs> Bad idea to go there when you have time and money to spend, because you spend it. Both of them, money and time. So it was kind of cool. This is a 432 rating on Untapped. And I'm just going to try it again. So, taste for style. It tastes like an American double style. Like it tastes, it's got very nice dark taste to it. Slightly roasty. It's very nice. Um, drinkability for 17%. I have not had a 17% stout that tasted this smooth, so smooth. in a long time. Wow. Like, I'm surprised it's over 10%. Like, this is over, this is about four keystones in this beer. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good comparison. Four keystones in this beer alone. So, like, it's quarantine. You want to fucking party. Like, this, that's what yeah. you're going to do. So, you're trying to not remember the quarantine. This one's the one that you want to go to because it's delicious want. and 
It'll put you on your butt. Yeah, so 17%. Super easy to drink. Drinkability is incredible. Taste for style. I like it how it's a double American stout. It tastes very good. What I'm not a big fan of is, once again, I'm not getting all the adjuncts that they talk about. Mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> excuse me. I got the coronavirus. Just diagnosed COVID-19, but I'll still be here for you. No worries. Um, I get a lot of what they're talking about. Like, it's sweet. Like, the vanilla nibs are sweet. You know, the maple that's supposed to be in it is sweet. But none of those are really popping to me. Like, I'm not getting all those flavors just jumping out at me. Not hitting me in the face. Yeah. So... Taste for style, I'm going to have to, like, kind of move it down. Because I get the cocoa, but I don't get the other two flavors. And I'm, this it's is just lacking, you know? Yeah. Next to, next to Listerman's, this is supposed to be, like, one of the better. You hear clicking and clanking, that's our fat dog. <laughs> you know him. His name's Moose. He's actually quite mad that he doesn't have an advent calendar today. <laughs> um, but it's just kind of lacking on on the one end of it tastes like a sweet stout you know it tastes like a pastry stout but the, the adjuncts aren't popping out and maybe we're just spoiled because of having listerman so close by i don't know my final overall rating for this is going to be a three-quarter pour uh it's fantastic for 17 percent. if we're talking about just beers to drink during the quarantine full pour i'm drinking this every day yeah. all day just to get drunk and forget about this whole thing ever fucking happened and just staying <laughs> at home if we're talking about flavor of beer if we're talking about styles what we're expecting to get three-quarter pour so, Jay Wakefield, I loved you when I was there. My two specialties that I brought home. Ben recommended. Yeah, you know, they're still fantastic beers, but the adjuncts just aren't there for me. So, go ahead and rate it, and then we'll just move right on. Yeah, I agree. Um, Definitely a great stout. Like, you would not be able to tell that it was 17%. Like, even if you don't like stouts, I'd probably still recommend it to you to try because it's awesome that it's that high alcohol and... It just tastes like a, you know, roasty beer. Again, the vanilla, not really getting. The maple, not really. Maybe the cocoa a little bit. I think that's kind of just the mixture with the roasty taste. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with, again, the three-quarter pour. Now, if it was a beer that I, you know, somebody was giving it to me, yeah, I would drink it. Like, it's, it yeah. could be a full pour for quarantine times. but No, it's definitely a drink. Like, yeah. if someone's offering this, you never pass it up. <laughs> yeah. My three-quarter pour is based on what everything they said would be in it mm. um, and based on the fact that there might be other better pastry stouts out there but if we're at a quarantine 17 percent let's yeah. fucking party so you know, you like, i'm ready to drink all right so next up platform somewhat controversial right now um got bought out so we still love them we're still supporting them um i think we had the red and the blue martian mm -hmm. uh both the slushy beers are supposed to be like the ices so this one is pink martian brewed with a bunch of mango and guava. We've actually had this before, but I'm going to go ahead and try it again. It's been a little bit since we've had it, so. I got my spot. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. So this one is coming in at 8.5%. It's a fruited sour. Um, again, slushy style mango guava. has that lactose, a little bit of vanilla flavor in there. Coming in at a 4.07 on untap, so anything above a 4 is pretty solid, typically. Almost every time, just get it. Yeah. So, um, they actually have all their ingredients on the side, too, which is pretty cool. So, you can kind of try and make your own. Maybe you will all have convince Pat to try and make one for us. So As you I can see, I don't know what you actually can see in the camera or not, but we got some things sitting over there, so maybe my next one will be that. So. We'll find out. So, this one's pretty great. Um... It's not overly sour, so if you're looking for a super sour puck of your lips beer, not going to be that for you. It is a fruited sour, so it has a little bit of that pucker to it, but also has a lot of that mango guava flavor. If you like guava, you're going to love this beer. Um, I get a little bit of lactose. It does have a little bit of creaminess to it, which is good. Um, if I was given this beer, I'd probably give it a full pour. I typically like the sours. I like the fruited beers. They're really great for me, but um, yeah. You forgot drinkability and taste for style. I'm <laughs> just skipping over them. <laughs> Someone's been just drinking trying today. to drink the rest of the beers. <laughs> I know we got some upstairs. We'll get there. So drinkability, um, easy to drink. Like I said, fruity, a little bit of sour. I think it's easy. It goes down easy. It's nice summery spring type beer. And then um, taste for style, I would say tastes like a fruit and sour. So A plus there. All right. Yeah. So. So 
So my drinkability is incredibly easy. Um, I'm kind of correlating this to Natter Days from last summer. Super easy, super crushable. It's very refreshing, nice to drink, right? Uh, taste for style. It's not very sour. It's not puffy or lip sour, but it also doesn't have much of a sour kick. Like the Icy and the Blue Martian, they have like a sour kick to them, you know? So this one doesn't have much of a sour kick to it. Uh, but that's okay because the mango and the guava, especially the guava, if you like guava, if you like those flavors in beer, you definitely need to try this pink Martian because the guava just punches you in the mouth. And that, the only reason we got this is because a friend of ours, he owns a, a gas station tap house. So <laughs> for the people that do not live in Ohio, where is a gas station tap house? So it is a gas station where you fill up your car with gas and then you can go inside and you can have a pint if you choose to. Drinking and driving is apparently legal here. I don't know. But uh, he's got 10 beers on tap, and he's actually not the largest, but he gets a great selection. So we actually had a, we have a place uh, about 30 minutes from us that has about 30 to 40 beers on tap at a gas station. So that's kind of cool. So we have unique things here. Um, but he's the one that recommended it because he loves guava. So we tried it. I'm trying it again. And it's good. You know, I really like it. I'm going to give it a full pour because of taste. Um, I think it's fantastic. I'm going to crush this all summer long if I can get my hands on it. The only diff my only thing for me is it's not very sour. So if you're looking for a sour beer, you're going to be a little disappointed. Um, it's more of a fruit beer to me. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't get much sour to it, but I get a lot of the fruits, which is great. So I give it a full pour because I, I like the way it tastes. Love the way it tastes. Love guava. But it's just not as sour to me. So it's pretty cool. The next one I'm moving on really touches close to my heart. So when I was in college, I used to just... Here was my method. I, I shouldn't say I just did this because I didn't just do this. This was like my, my entire method before I joined a fraternity and like had free drinks all the time. So when I was a freshman in college, what I would do is I would take a backpack with me. And in my backpack, I carried a couple things. I carried every color solo cup I could find at Walmart. And I, I carried the secret. I'm not in college anymore. I'm fucking old. Like, they can just do They Anyone can use it now. <laughs> Any college kids that watches this video deserves to know this secret because those kids are not watching this video. <laughs> uh, I had every single color solo cup in my backpack, and I had every single color Sharpie in my backpack because where I went to school, there was a couple things. When you paid to get in to a party that had unlimited beer because they had kegs, you either got a Sharpie on your hand or you got a specific color solo cup. Or a lot of places offer a BYOB policy. You could just show up with your own beer and you didn't have to pay as much to get in or you didn't have to pay at all to get in. So what I would do is I would show up with those cups, I show up with those Sharpies, and I would show up with two 40-ounce Hurricanes in my backpack. And I would just pull them out and be like, I'm BYOBing. And I'd be like, all right, you can just come on in. And then I'd get in there. Crack open a hurricane. You cannot buy a hurricane malt liquor and not drink it. Like, it's just, it is what it is. You know what? I'm going to buy one, put it on the show, just so everyone can see how <laughs> fantastic it is. But, so I drank quite a bit of malt liquor. But what I did that for was to get into all these college parties for free and then drink all their beer. And only got caught one time, got kicked out. It was a big ordeal. I don't want to talk about it. But this... Right here is J&J's Malt Liquor. It's a 9.2% and it's coming from Tripping Animals out in uh, Miami, Florida. So as we talked before, I was just in Miami not that long ago. And I don't know, this label itself doesn't show much. Um, I hope you can, I hope you can see it. A There's a little koala or some shit right there. I hope you can see it. <laughs> um, but with this, this place makes the coolest labels like all their animals look high they they do everything like it's so funny it's great and all the people there are fantastic they're super nice like i started buying like six packs there because i wanted the labels i wanted to take them we were at a wedding i was trying to show them to everybody and we just got a bunch of stuff for free like yeah. they're super cool they're awesome. people like and they were great and they might have been high too i don't know <laughs> but the theme itself was great but i really wanted to put this on here because if i had this malt liquor when i was in college i would be dead so I'm just going to cheers it. I'm going to drink it. And I'm going to tell you about it. Wow. Wow. <laughs> just like that, it's gone. So this is made by Tripping Animals. It is a collaboration with MIA, um, which is a brewery down there. MIA was neat, but it was more of like a club um, when you went there. Like the music was loud. There was like dancing. There was like. I don't, know, I don't want to say bright lights, but they were like bright, colorful lights. And like, 
it was really hard to get a grasp of like the whole thing. Like I was trying to like, order beer and they're like, well, that's out. This isn't here. And like, well, you have to look if it's upside down. I was just really confused and stressed <laughs> out. So I went to Tripping Animals next. It was a quite calm place. And then I found this. I wish I kind of lived there just to drink this malt liquor all the time. 9.2%. Super easy drinking. Taste for style. Think about hurricane high gravity. You tastes know how, like college. Yeah, it <laughs> tastes like college. Exactly. I'm going to go to a party. Maybe make terrible decisions and make out with a dude. I don't know. It's going to happen when you drink this beer. It's going to... But it, it take a hurricane high gravity. It's just... this guy. <laughs> I got married. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you, you take a hurricane high gravity and you taste it and you take everything that you hate about it and you just throw it away. You take everything that you like about a malt liquor and you add it to this. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Like Malt liquors, when you drink them, like they're kind of overpowering. They have a lingering taste and you're kind of like, oh, that's 9.2%. Like It's terrible. Not with this. It's 9.2%. It's super easy. And it's just an incredibly tasting beer. Like I was so impressed with this that I bought a bunch of them and I took them to the wedding. And I started giving them the beer fans. And I was like, I don't want to drink a malt liquor. I'm like, yeah, you fucking do. Like This shit is good. <laughs> so taste for style, malt liquor. So much better than any Mulligers I ever had. Like I said, I would be dead if they sold this in 40 ounces in college. Drinkability, so easy. I want this in my house at all times. Final of all rating, can I have two full pours? Can I, can I <laughs> double is, fist it? Can I <laughs> double fist these bad boys? Like, is that a thing? I don't think you need that, babe. I need it. It was that good. I, if you ever get your hands on this, you need to do it. What do you think? All right, so... She doesn't like malt liquor as much as I do, but here we go. Back over to the um, actual um, <laughs> rating of Double this Double fisting. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, malt liquor, as you said, I typically don't like liquor at all. Like, that is not my good to do. It's probably not a great idea for me to drink liquor. Um, but for this one being 9.2%, it, it goes down pretty easy. It's kind of plain, honestly, to me. It, it doesn't really have a burn like a liquor, which is great. Like a malt liquor. Yeah. I honestly, i probably give it a three-quarter pour. I would drink it if I was given it. It would get you drunk. Don't think it's the best thing I ever had. I definitely don't think I'd be like, hey, I'm going to go get that Let beer. Let me stop but... her there. She's <laughs> never had a Colt 45. She's <laughs> never had a high-gravity hurricane. She's never had a camo. She's never had any of these. He's rocking the cradle over here, so I mean... She's like <laughs> 29. I'm just kidding. She's like 25. But still, she's never had any of this staple malt liquor. So the fact that she's giving a three-quarter pour is amazing. Because like most people would give most malt liquors a quarter pour, if that. So that's true. That's so, good. I mean, three-quarter pour is pretty high for me, so... That's pretty impressive for not even trying style. other ones. Yeah. yeah. So... So yeah, all right, well, well, we'll go on to the next one. I don't want to give him too much time to talk because he'll probably just talk about this all night. More of this one, right? Yeah. Um, he's probably going to end up having mine, so. So yeah, this next one, Dragon's Milk. As we've had Dragon's Milk before on the show, I think we've had, what, Raspberry, um, maybe the original Dragon's Milk. This is our last one. He's not I listening to me anymore, this. so. All right, anyway, so he's not really helpful. But this is actually the 2020 Reserve, so that's pretty cool. If we make it through this pandemic... We had the last 2021, so that's pretty cool. Rum barrel aged stout. It has chocolate, hazelnut, and toasted coconut. So it actually has 2,500 pounds of coconut, 1,000 pounds of hazelnut, and 200 pounds of cocoa. That's a lot of pounds. Yeah, it's a lot of pounds. I mean, we know what a lot of pounds means, but this is a lot of pounds. I have gained a lot of pounds since this quarantine started. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. They, they had the thing where it was like, either you're going to come out really fit or like 50 pounds heavier. I think we're on that one. We're already there. <laughs> it's not even like, cl even close to being over. Do you so. think, pause, everyone that's watching this, share this on Trippy Animal's social media pages and let them know that I love this as much. I could become their spokesperson for the malt liquor. It's a thing. We can't go back to Miami. We're already going to buy a sports car because of Miami. Oh, yeah, we were in... <laughs> anyway, just, let's we'll just keep going. All right, so here we go. Dragon's Milk. So this is coming out of New Holland, Michigan. Um, it is aged three months in Jamaican rum barrels. And as I said, it has like pounds and pounds of coconut, chocolate, hazelnut, 
coming in at a 383 rating on untapped so it's a little actually on the low end for a dragon's milk reserve yeah yeah but this is their first reserve this year so I'm, I'm I'm interested to see what the rest of them taste like, but I know for the last couple of years that is extremely they're, they're all over four point one. Right. Yeah. But I mean, it's also only aged three months. Like we're yeah. only three months into twenty twenty, so it is a little boozier. I'm definitely getting that mm. rum barrel. Rum is a very distinct barrel to put beers in. I don't know if we'll ever do it because I just typically am not a rum person, and I can strong like taste the strong rum. I can taste a little bit of the coconut, a little bit of the hazelnut. Um. If I was given this, it's going to get you drunk. Um, I don't know. He didn't put... Let's see. It's coming in at 12.5%. Honestly, I'd rather drink that 17% though than this. So I'm probably going to give this actually a half pour. I'm really not digging the rum right now. So going I'm going to give it a half pour. Uh, taste through style. I mean, it tastes like a rum barrel stout. So they hit that right on the nose. Definitely tastes like the rum. I don't get all of the like hard coconut or hazelnut. Just little hints of it. So... So when I do this show, I normally pick beers that we've had before, and the only one that we actually had before were these two, um, and these two were new. And then I picked a surprise beer that I'm excited for, something that I want to try, and this was really the surprise beer. I knew this one would taste solid. I didn't know if it would have all the flavors, but I knew it would taste great because like they do a good job. So I picked this as my surprise beer, and I looked at rating 3.8%. I was like, well, that's still pretty high on untapped, but... When it comes to jungle, uh, jungle milk, dragon's milk, mm -hmm. it's normally over a four. Um, and as I'm drinking this, and I looked at the, I looked at it, 2,500 pounds of coconut, 1,000 pounds of hazelnut, and yeah. 200 pounds of cocoa. I'm just getting straight raw. It's like sitting in my mouth, and it honestly tastes like I took a shot of rum. As like I'm drinking just, it, I get none of that. Like, I just taste the rum. I'm surprised a it has. A, I'm surprised it has a three point eight rating now. If you like rum, if you're one of those yeah, big rum like people, you'll probably think this is fantastic. Like, yeah. don't get me wrong. Like, the rum is smooth. The rum is nice. Like, it tastes like a Jamaican rum. But it doesn't taste like a beer. Yeah, you taste you know? it. And it, I taste, it tastes like I took a shot of rum. And yeah. it's just sitting in my mouth. And it's the same thing and here. it's not bad. It doesn't burn. It just, like, it just tastes like rum. Maybe so, a tiny bit of flavor. I'm going wa to wash that one down. <laughs> The only way to really wash down a beer is with a 9.2% malt liquor. Yeah. But, so my taste for style is going to be poor for them. I've never said that for Dragon Smoke, but 2,500 pounds of hazelnut or of co coconut and 1,000 pounds of hazelnut and 200 pounds of cocoa. I don't get any of it. Like, that's a, that's a lot. Like, yeah. that is a ton. Like, we look at how much people add to beers all the time. That's a lot of three different flavors, and it's not there. So that's going to hurt them. Drink I honestly think it's just not aged enough. Drinkability is going to be very low if you don't like rum. Honestly, this is going to be a quarter port, and I put it on the show because I really thought we were going to have an episode of fantastic beers that we were all going to have like close to four full pours. And I'm going to have to give it – I'm so disappointed right now. Like I'm kind of butthurt by it, and that I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to put it on the shelf. I'm going to put a tag on it that says – Drink this in three years, yeah. and or hopefully the show's still going. Hopefully I'm still that guy, and I don't die of liver failure at that point. The coronavirus. I, I coughed once already, so that's a thing. And I had diarrhea today. Also that's an early symptom. That's pretty typical, family. though. So, you know, My bowels are he shot. He likes to be in the bathroom a lot. It's mainly masturbating. <laughs> Remember the whole porn thing I was talking about? That wasn't us. That was just a thing. Yeah, that was before he had to do that before we got on the show because we just would have been shaking or something. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's just not that great. I love Dragon's Milk and I get every reserve that they make, and this one is just the worst. This and one's just fine. The oatmeal cookie, pretty solid. I don't, know, I don't know if we did the oatmeal cookie on the show or not. We have one upstairs. We can do that next. <laughs> we'll see. So, overall. That one's not good. My overall rating is a quarter port for sure. Last week, we didn't do Taylor. We had to celebrate my 100 beer, and I did the Stone Cold Pours thing. But since we're quarantined, Taylor thought it would be a good idea to, instead of have Taylor's drinkable beer of the week, I got to find my button here. That's what I'm looking at, because I got to make sure I turn this off, or not it's going to look real stupid. <laughs> um, Taylor thought it would be a good idea that instead of having her recommendation, I just have a chuggable beer. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to take this upstairs and I'm just going to chug a chuggable beer for everybody watching at home. So before we do that, because I'm not going to have that ending at the end of all this, remember, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, share this with everybody, especially these guys, because this is fantastic. And just remember that happiness is always a flight away. Taylor, thanks for coming back, you average Jane. Cheers. All right, so we're killing two birds with one stone. I'm gonna shoot a chug video for CCBC, it's a group that I'm in, fantastic group, and I'm gonna finish it for my YouTube channel. So I, I get what a lot of people are thinking. You don't wanna chug a beer where you're chugging like a 15% beer that I had today or a 17% fantastic Jake Wakefield beer that we talked about earlier, a 12% or a 10%. Wow, I am starting to think I have a drinking problem today. That's not even counting the other beers that I shot on my show today or this tree search. Anyway, you want to chug something and you want to feel part of the team. You got to get a crispy boy, right? Exactly. So I have a great beer to chug. It's a craft beer. You can buy a bunch of them and it's not that high in alcohol. So for you, those, for, you know, for people that are sitting at home that don't want to chug a beer because they want to taste it, they want to cherish it. And for those that want to partake and they're afraid to chug something that's too high, we have the lighthearted ale. It comes in at 3.7%. It's a session IPA. If you haven't had one, I definitely recommend getting one because drinkability for a 3.7 is obviously incredibly easy. Taste for style for a session IPA. It's probably the best session IPA I've had in a very, very long time. And it's quarantine time, so we got to chug a beer. That's just what we do here. Um, I've never chugged out of this glass, really, so we're going to see what happens. Cheers. A little wet, but that's all right.